So we've looked at flowers. Now we're going to look at fruits because angiosperms have evolved in tandem with all these different groups of organisms and working together with those organisms to be better competitors. They're going to do the same thing with their fruits. They want their seeds to be able to disperse away from them and they're going to co-opt many different options for how to do that. Wind is a pretty classic option. Um, it's non-selective, right? You don't know when the wind is going to come and when it's not. Uh, it's not going to deliver something to a specific place, but it's pretty reliable to exist at some point and you don't have to pay for it. So many things are going to be wind pollinated and have um, some kind of wing or tufted structure to allow it to catch onto the wind and travel farther. So here we have um, a dandelion seed head, right? This is one of those head inflorescences. So it'd be multiple little florets. Each of those florets then converts into this fruit structure where we have the fluffy calyx and then this long kind of stand that attaches it to the seed. So each of those is like a little upside down umbrella that gets picked up by the wind and carried away. Here we have a fruit called a Samara where it has this big wing and then this seed here. So this whole structure is a fruit, um, even though you wouldn't think of it normally as like a fruit that you eat. Fruits are just these um, dispersal vectors for seeds uh, that are produced by angiosperms. We also can have water dispersal. This isn't super common, um, but it'd be more common in places where you'd have to rely on that. So if you are on an island and you want to get your offspring to another island so you don't just overpopulate your one island where you live, it would be helpful if you could send your fruits into the water. Which is what coconuts do. So coconuts are made of this uh, husk around them that is um, fibrous and has a lot of air pockets and is um, not very dense so it floats um, and it protects the seed inside from the salt water around it. You could also have ballistic dispersal. Um, so one way or one kind of time you might want to use this, you can think about mistletoes. So dwarf mistletoes are these tiny parasitic plants that grow on trees and they infect those trees and eat them from the inside. And then when they're ready, they produce these fruits that explode and they're sticky. And so that tree has grown and it's produced its offspring and those offspring are living all around it. So when these dwarf mistletoes are produced on them, they're up high in the air, they explode down and they rain down on all the young trees, stick to them, start their infection, and then, you know, three to seven years later, they produce these parasitic plants outside of them and make their own fruits and explode onto all their offspring. So that is a pretty good dispersal method for them. They don't want to get far away because they want to find a susceptible host, which is likely close by. So here we have a fruit that is dehiscent at maturity. So it's dry, and then when it dries out, it opens up. And when it opens, it's these used to be flat down, and when it opens, it splits along the seam and curls upward, so then it whoosh, hurls that seed out. So each of these used to contain a seed that then got hurled out into the environment. So that's a ballistic dispersal because it is shooting that seed off. Another example is a video that I will attach, or not attach, but um, put a link to in the description. Um, this is wild cucumber. And so um, for wild cucumber, it builds up water pressure inside of the fruit. And then once that pressure is enough, it detaches itself via that pressure like a little rocket, shooting water and then hurling this <laughs> um, fruit downward and shooting the seeds up. So there'd be a bunch of seeds shot out here. Normally I play this video in class and I get really psyched because there's really funny music to it. So another option and the one you're probably most familiar with is animal ingestion. These are all the fruits that you think of as fruits, the things that are tasty, things that you wanna eat. And so if you are a bird, those seeds are gonna go through your system really fast and you're gonna poop them out and they're gonna land in this nice pile of fresh, um, nitrogen rich uh, material that you can then grow in, right? And you get dispersed all around. Other animals are going to be messy eaters. And so that's how they'll be good dispersers. Uh, we are not very good dispersers via ingestion, but we are good dispersers via ingestion in the way that um, we then want to eat more of those fruits. So we plant them, but we don't go, you know, eat the fruit, poop it outside and let it grow. 
or I shouldn't say we, not all of us. And the last one we'll talk about is animal attachment. So you can't just say animal dispersed because animal ingestion is specifically geared toward getting an animal to try to eat the fruit, whereas animal attachment has more of a Velcro-like strategy where you are trying to um, get a passerby and then hitch a ride. And these are the fruits that you are very annoyed with because they get in your socks and they stab you in your feet and they itch um, and they get all up in your clothes. So burrs, barbs, bristles, things that are gonna be sticky onto your clothes. And what that's intended for was originally animal fur. So here you can see cockle burr, and I can't actually remember what these two are, um, but we have barbs, things that are sticking into skin, things that are hooking onto fur um, to try to travel with this animal to a new destination. Your mission now is to go outside and do some sleuthing. Use these clues to try to figure out who pollinates which flowers and how fruits are dispersed. The only way to really figure stuff out is to go practice and to go look and go observe. Um, and honestly, it's not as straightforward as I teach it, right? So when you go out there, things are going to have multiple pollinators. There's going to be fruits you've never seen before, things you don't even know are fruits. So you got to go look. You got to go ask questions and then bring those questions to me because I want to interact with you.